Welcome to Words For My Face. On tonight's show, we're talking sports. Specifically, we're talking Cy Young and MVP awards. We're also going to be talking about the NCAA playoff rankings too. We've got NBA start of the season, and we're talking NFL week, whatever it is, power rankings. It's Greatest round ones of all time, of all sports, ever. Do you think so? Beverly Hills Cop, Global Cop crossover needs to happen. But what is going on, everybody? Welcome to Words to My Face. My name is Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire, Brendan. You. And we are the one and only home of the Chewbacca Chainsaws. <laughs> Really, really quiet chainsaws sometimes. <laughs> sometimes they're quiet chainsaws. Got a silencer on it? Okay, now he, he does have a silencer on his chainsaw. That makes him even more deadly if he wasn't deadly enough. He doesn't need it because it doesn't matter. You can't run from him when he's coming at you with this chainsaw. But, uh, yeah. He is the fastest runner in the world. He is. We, I mean, he's won every Olympic gold medal since the Olympics started. In Platinum Africa. medal. Platinum medal. Oh, that's true. Yeah, yeah. He... He doesn't win gold medals. I just give him the platinum medal. I keep forgetting that. We all think that there's a the gold is the highest, but platinum is really yeah. High. Gold is really the second place, but we always focus on that because we already know Chewbacca is going to win the, the platinum. He's already he's already won the highest award you can get. So to make everybody else feel good, we just give him something. Else. But yeah, so tonight is the sports show. Um, so yeah, let's start off this week the same way we start off every week, and that is with the Chewbacca Chainsaw of the Week award. <laughs> I'm going to be honest with you, to this week's is kind of weak, um, sorry, but it's going to Marcus Mariota, and that is because he threw for three touchdowns and ran for three touchdowns, and Oregon's win this past weekend over Stanford, 45-17 win, I believe, so um, yeah, that's a pretty spectacular performance, more on that later, but he is Now, did he catch three interceptions? Uh, no, he didn't, he didn't, because um, we didn't predict him to catch in our three interceptions, so, you know... It has to be predicted by us first before it can happen. Mm. All right, all right, all right. Well, no. <laughs> but yeah, so he is the Chewbacca Chainsaw Award winner. Go ahead and give him his award. <laughs> but yeah, let's start start off the actual sports segment. I guess the last segment was sports. That's sports. Chewbacca Chainsaw Award is sports. But let's start talking about NL and AL Cy Young and MVP awards. Now, they what? started already giving out Gold Glove awards and Silver Slugger awards, but I believe this weekend they're going to hand out the big awards, which is the Cy Young given to the best pitcher in both the AL and NL, and the MVP, which is given to the best player in both the AL and NL. And Brendan decides he doesn't want to have any part of this conversation, so he's just gone. He's taken off. <laughs> but, um, so let's start with the NL. And so this is, is kind of an open and shut case. Now, I will tell you the two runners up already, and I'm going to guarantee lock of the century of the week of the millennium that this person is going to win it. But let's start off with the two runners up. Now, we have uh, Adam Wainwright from St. Louis. He had a, a good season. He was 20-9 and nine this year, so really good season. Uh, he had, um, what is that, uh, 2.38 ERA, so nothing to scoff at. That's a really good. That means he pretty much <laughs> scoffing at it. 2.38 uh, runs per nine innings pitch, so that's pretty darn good. Uh, now he did have 179 strikeouts in 227 innings, so great year. I mean, Adam Wainwright is one of the better pitchers in the league. Granted, he's not better than the Cy Young, eventual Cy Young award winner. And then we also had Johnny Cuoto from uh, Cincinnati. He was also 20 and nine this year. Um, he was a 2.25 ERA, so very good ERA. But this guy was amazing in strikeouts. He had 242 strikeouts in 243 innings. So that means he had about a strikeout in innings. So, yeah, you can't really bat that. He was fanning batters all year long. And, you know, Cincinnati, they started out really hot, and then they kind of fell apart. So it's not his fault. He still did his job. It's just the rest of the team didn't. Um, but, yeah, so the eventual MV uh, – sorry – uh, Cy Young Award winner will be Clayton Kershaw. This guy was just lights out. He was 21 and three. He had a 1.77 ERA. I believe he's the only pitcher in history to have an ERA under two, two or three years in a row. I think this is his third year in a row. Um, 
he had 239 strikeouts in 198 innings. So he averaged more than one strikeout an inning, which is <laughs> just in the pantheon of pitching. He had one of the greatest regular seasons any pitcher's ever had. And that's not even to mention he probably would have had more stats on there, but he missed the first six weeks, I believe, of the year. So, yeah, yeah. And he was the guy who got the $215 million sign, uh, extension uh, at the beginning of this year and proved that he is well worth it. Um, so look for him to get his second Cy Young award in the uh, in a row. And let's stay on the NL side, and let's talk a little bit about the MVP. Now, if you watched any of our videos, which you should have, what's wrong with you? You know who I'm going to say is the MVP. Um, but I'll just give you the other two runners up. Uh, number one was first baseman Giancarlo Stanton. This guy was a stud out there in Miami until he got hit in the face with a pitch and broke his jaw. Which was just crazy. I mean, it was it was a horrible injury. If you saw that man, it ah, you know his face blew up right there. Um, but yeah, he hit 37 homers and missed like the last month and a half of the season. So nothing too shabby there. And he was also second in on base percentage. So he was always on base. Uh, then we have Andrew McCutcheon, the 2013. MVP award winner from the Pittsburgh Pirates. Uh, you know what? If it wasn't for the guy I'm going to say is going to get it, he definitely would deserve it. Because this guy was not only you know the the best hitter on his team, he was the best person on base, best on base percentage, I believe in the entire um, you know MLB. Um, but he was also the spiritual leader of this t- of the Pittsburgh Pirates. Mm-hmm. Anytime they seemed to get down, he seemed to you know and he just bring them back. Uh, baseball is such an individual sport. But this guy somehow made it like, okay, I'm just going to influence the entire team with the way I play, with the heart I give out there. He was also one of the best center fielders, uh, you know, of the year. I believe he did win the Gold Glove, and I'm not would not be surprised if he won the Silver Slugger either. I believe that was given today. So sorry, I'm not up to date on that. I was at work. It happens. But yeah, oh, no. the person I think is going to win the MVP is actually Clayton Kershaw. Now this will be the first time since 1968 that a NL pitcher has won both the MVP and the Cy Young. It really does not happen very often, um, but Clayton Kershaw, you just saw, I I rattled off his stats for this year, but every time the Dodgers would start falling down a little bit, his start would come, and he would just, you know, for lack of a better saying, he would stop the bleeding. If they were losing three games, when he came to pitch, they won. You know, I mean, it didn't matter what this guy did. He could do no wrong. Um, and then he would always push him on another spurt. Now, they had a great pitching staff. They have Zank, Zach Renke. They have uh, Josh Beckett. Both of those guys pitched solid this year. But Clayton Kershaw was above and beyond any other pitcher, almost any other pitcher season that has ever happened. So, uh, yeah. Now, when I say 1968 was the last time uh, an NL pitcher has won the MVP and Cy Young, it did happen in 2011 in the AL, but different league, different division, Different league, yeah. Um, so you, you can't quite count the two. I don't know why. I would think that the it would be more likely in the NL than in the AL because the AL also has the designated hitter. And as I'll go through the stats of the AL Cy Young pitchers, their ERAs is usually about a point ha- higher because in the NL you do have the pitchers hit, and those are traditionally some of the worst hitters out there because they don't take batting practice generally. Um, traditionally, but you do have lots of exceptions for that too. Like. And they only hit once every five days, you know, and stuff like that. Yeah. But, um, well, what what's his face? Um, um speaking speaking. We, we've of had health, we, there was pitchers jump... that, that, that set uh, records, uh, like home run records, uh, in the last twenty years. What? What? <laughs> Throw out some stats for you, Ryan. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? <laughs> Maybe he hit three home runs in a year. That would be a pitcher record for home runs or something like that. Um, I'm trying what to think, try to Brian? try to see where you're going with this one right there. I, I want to find out. Just give me. I a can't moment. remember a pitcher pit batting over 300 ever. I mean, it might have happened. I, I maybe well, back you in can get a home run record without batting over 300. You you certainly can, but I I I I I. I Challenge anybody out there in Lissagner land to find a pitcher who's hit more than 10 runs, uh, home runs in a season. Now, don't count the dead ball era, which ended in 1920. Um, but from 1920 on, I bet you you can't find a single pitcher that hit more than 10 home runs in one season. I challenge you to almost find a pitcher that's hit 10 home runs in his whole career. 
Uh, challenge accepted. All right. Did you did you find somebody? No, womp yourself. Well, not yet. Jeez. <laughs> the guy that I thought was, was actually a first baseman, but anyway. <laughs> Wait, who'd you think? Who did you think? Uh, for some reason, I thought uh, Mark McGuire. Don't say Mark McGuire. <laughs> oh, Mark McGuire. Uh, yeah. Yes. No. He did. He did not. He did not do that. He did not. But uh, yeah. So let's jump into the AL and talk about some Cy Young Award winners. Now, this one's more up in the air. I will give who I believe is the Cy Young Award winner. But let's start with a uh, Corey. Uh, actually, Chris Sale. Uh, he's from the Chicago White Sox. He's a young kid. Pitched really well. He had a 12 and 4 record with a 2.17 ERA. So spectacular ERA. Uh, 208 strikeouts in 174 innings, so he's doing great there. But the White Sox really weren't relevant this year. He really didn't have to do too much, so uh, I, I just don't see why they even he how he even made the top three. I would have put like, um, you know, Max Scherzer or somebody in there at, in the top three. So, uh, but you know what? I'm not one of those voters. But and then we had uh, Corey Clubber from the Cleveland Indians. He was 18 and nine, so you know played more um, with a 2.44 ERA. And now he did have 230, I'm sorry, 269 strikeouts in 235 innings. So, yeah, I think he led the league in strikeouts. I mean, in all wow. major league baseball. So that's pretty damn good right there. <clears throat> Again, more than one strikeout per inning, you're doing something right. Um, but then the person I think will be eventual uh, Cy Young Award winner of the AL is going to be King Felix. And that is Felix Hernandez. He is the pitcher of the Seattle Mariners. This guy is a beast. Now, he didn't have the greatest record. He was 15-6, and six, but I don't think much of that was his fault. I think his average run support was about, like, two or three runs, and he only gave up about 2.14. That's his ERA. So <laughs> when when your team is only scoring about as many runs as you'll give up and it's that low, you're not doing too well. Now, the Mariners were competitive this year, but they were in the best division in baseball with the Oakland Athletics and Angels just – killing it all year long. Oh so, man, I kind of want to wait for, for people to comment on this and tell us how stupid we are but but I did find you know a, a great hitting pitcher Okay An incredibly famous one, do you want to know who it is? Who? Babe Ruth Oh that's right, he did, well <laughs> yeah he pitched but but that's yeah. Uh, yeah it's kind of the dead ball era kind of not really damn it you're right he, it's he was, but he, like you can't he played every him. position he played every position so it's not really yeah, fair you but you can't discount him you Brian. can't you're right you can't okay so you win the challenge uh, Wes Farrell also was a pitting hitcher that um did pretty well so did you say but. pitting hitcher pitching hitting pitcher there we go <laughs> I swear you said a pitting hitcher. <laughs> But okay, okay. So so all right. And when was he? Don't tell I don't me the 30s. Too. Have a, they don't even have a, a a picture for him. So <laughs> well, so there you go. Um, but yeah, yeah. So uh, well, but yeah. So I think King Felix will win it. Um, now he did have about 248 strikeouts in 236 innings. Uh, he was second in the league in strikeouts. So that guy's just been spectacular. He's the one who's going to really lock that up. But then the AL for the uh, the MVP is going to be a little bit closer to race. I don't think it's quite as... Again, Clayton Kershaw, I really think, is going to run away with that. But um, in the AL, you have um, Michael Brantley. Uh, now, he was good, but he wasn't great. He hit 327, but that's really... I mean, he had a good on-base percentage and all that. But uh, he, for the Cleveland Indians, they really weren't that relevant this year, so I can't imagine he would get it. Um, but then you had Victor Martinez from Detroit, hit 335, 32 homer... Homers, he led uh, in on-base percentage for the AL, so really good for a good, relevant team. Uh, I really think that Mike Trout is going to run away with it this year, though. He had 36 homers, um, but he led the AL in runs. He scored 115 runs himself, and he had 111 RBIs. Uh, well, that's not bad. AL, so. That's not bad at I all. I think so. he, he did more to help his team win, which was first in the American League. So I would say he's probably the most valuable player, and, I mean, the Angels... That was just a stroke of genius picking him. I believe he's only 23 years old. This kid is amazing. He's been in the uh, MVP talk, I want to say the past three years, since he's been playing baseball pretty much. Since they brought him up to the majors, he has been in the MVP talk. And if he keeps it up, I mean, baseball players can play until they're 35 easy. So, yeah, that was a spectacular one. And I think he will win his first MVP, his first of probably many 
this year. But I don't know. Let us know what you think. Who's going to win the Cy Young in both the AL and NL? Who's going to win the MVP AL and NL? Let us know. Comments down below, of course, at Words my Face on Twitter, wordsmyface.com, wordsmyface at gmail.com. All right, I'm just going to stop saying that email address. But Google Plus and Facebook, always good ways of getting a hold of us. Let us know. Nobody's ever directly emailed me a thing. I've gotten stuff from everywhere else except for direct email. No one emails people anymore. don't like direct no, email. Not not on social networks because that's like it's like writing a letter. It's yeah, a, it's, it's true. It's, it's like that's too old school. Out, put it in an address. I suppose it'll just click comments. Yeah, go. Just click, <laughs> boom, done. I've gotten something from every other form of thing I've put out there except for direct email. Um, but let's move it on. Let's talk a little bit about college football. And, uh, so we have the second week of rankings for the college football playoffs, and we'll just run down it. We won't get quite as in-depth as we did last week. If you want to see what the remaining schedules are and some of that, just go ahead and check our video last week. It's up there. It's college football rankings week one, I think. So, <laughs> you know, nice and easy. Um, but number one is still Mississippi State. Uh, now, they grinded out a pretty close win against Arkansas, uh, the 17-10, I believe. Uh Arkansas is not a great team, but they are an SEC team, so anytime you're playing one of those, it's a team you play every year. It is kind of a rivalry. Yeah, not one of their big ones. Of course, Ole Miss will be their big rivalry game, but mm -hmm. no doubt. Um, then number two, you have FSU. Now, they almost dropped the ball. They were down 21 nothing in the first half to Louisville, and they surged back and ended up winning, I believe, 42-34 to or something like that, so... That was a big win for them. Jameis Winston, of course, looked great in the second half. Not so great in the first half. Um, but I think we're just still waiting to see what happens with that autograph thing. Now, it's gone quiet on that front, but there's got to be something that'll happen. You don't just have 2,000 autographs pop up and nothing happen. So I think they're just trying to delay it as much as possible because they, they know it, it's bad. Like, but if, if I was them, I'd want to get it out of the way right now so that it doesn't affect the playoffs. You know? I think they're hoping that they can push it back to, like, the summer. But the summer, I mean, I guess he could declare for the draft and, you know, be done. <laughs> so maybe they're hoping I, mean, I don't know. I think there. they're just trying to push it back. Whatever they're doing, I think they're they're successfully pushing it back. And, you know, the cases do legitimately take some time to, to be worked up, especially something that they have they, – they don't have, like, a direct connection. They just have something suspicious. So, you know, so that, that all takes some time. They, they, they just better hope that he doesn't do something else in the, in the meantime, because this isn't the first time he's gotten in trouble for something. So, uh, Yeah, and this won't be the last, I guarantee it. Just just from his track record, he seems to not mind getting into a lot of trouble. So it's interesting there. Um, but then you have uh, Auburn beat Ole Miss this weekend, and Ole Miss was number four. No, no, was number three. And so Auburn took their spot to become number three. Uh, now, that was a spectacular game, one of the best games I've seen in college football all year. Uh, you had probably the most horrific injury I've seen since Paul George snapped his leg in half, and that was, and this is really unfortunate because this kid, Treadwell, he is a stellar wide receiver. I really thought he was, as he still could, is going places. But in the last, I want to say last two, three minutes of the game, they're driving down, they're down by like four points, uh, he gets catches a pass, runs it about 10 yards. He's crossing the goal line, and it's just it was a freak thing. Um, but he was being pulled down from behind by the defender, and his ankle got caught underneath the other player, and Ooh. literally just just instead of being like that, went like that. Um, yeah. And he ended up breaking his ankle, tore all the ligaments there. And the worst part of it, I mean, absolute worst part of it, probably about three inches from him scoring a touchdown, is when his ankle snapped. And he drops the ball. So not only does he have a horrific injury happen against him, his team loses the game because he fumbles right there. And and I don't blame him for fumble. No, I'm not. I'm not complaining. If my ankle snaps in half, you'll be lucky if I'd stay conscious, um, let alone hold on to a. F I can't. I can't hate on the guy for dropping the football. No hate mm -hmm. at all, Treadwell. You are a warrior. Just being able to, to, you know, not cry your eyes out on national TV. I don't know how you did that. I would have been bawling. I would have been crying. Uh, it, I would have been passed out and crying. That's how pathetic I would have been. They'd be like, "Is he even that's awake?" Nobody's crying. Pathetic, but just, you know, that's I'm, why you're not. A, don't don't that keep that caliber of an athlete. Just saying. No, no, no. Toughen up, Brian. I'm no, I'm no athlete, <laughs> but <laughs> could have walked it off. He could have walked uh, it off towards the, touch, the end zone. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. He won't be walking for a while, but yeah. So Treadwell, my my hats go off to you because that is just. I mean, that's literally insult to injury. Like literally, that's where that expression comes from. Insult to injury because uh, you drop the football about three three inches away from the goal line, and it looked like a touchdown at first. It looked like he fell into the goal the end zone with the ball in hand, but when you reviewed it, no, he dropped it just before. So. Yeah, that's really rough. And then you have number four, Oregon, jumped up from the number five spot. Now, they did kill Stanford, like I said, uh, 45-16 behind the play of Marcus Mariota. And it really looks like this kid is running away uh, with with the Heisman vote um, just because he has stellar performance after stellar performance. And they have a pretty rough schedule left up. Uh, now, they do play Utah next. And if you remember, I said Utah was my dark horse for last week, but mm. they lost. Yeah. 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 So, <laughs> um, yeah, they lost, but it was a really good game. They lost to Arizona State University, who was a very good team. It was an overtime game. Just something weird happened with the kicker at the last second, and he missed an overtime field goal. So that was just really weird to me. I didn't understand that that happened. But um, then you do have number five, Alabama. Uh, they beat Tennessee last week. They they demolished Tennessee, and they are playing LSU this week, up and coming LSU. Now, I don't think LSU will be in the playoffs, but they're going to be a top-10 team by the end of the season. Well, maybe not because they have to play a lot of high-ranked teams, but um, but they're a great team. But the game do- hmm? By, by beating those those good teams, that's how you become top-ranked, so there you go. Yeah, but I don't think they're beating Alabama. I really don't. I think they also have to play Auburn. I don't think they're beating them. Or maybe they did beat Auburn. I don't know. Somewhere then in they there. don't deserve but, to be a top-ranked team. They deserve to be top-10. They deserve- nope. They're young. If you can't beat Alabama, you don't start. Watch out for LSU next year. They're going to be a uh, top three team next year, guaranteed. Right. But um, the game to watch this year, this week is number six TCU is playing number seven Kansas State. Now, this will be a battle of the Titans. Both of these teams, if either one of them drops this game, they are not going to make it to the playoffs, but both of them have a good shot to make the playoffs by beating the other one. So, And I wouldn't even be surprised to see one of them leapfrog Alabama uh, probably not, because Alabama, if they beat LSU, that will be pretty good. But if any of the other top four lose and Alabama wins, let's say two of the top four lose, oh, okay, that's too easy, six and seven. But let's just say this. It'll be an entertaining game nonetheless. If, you wanna, if you're like, which game shall I watch this Saturday? Watch TCU and Kansas State. That'll be a really good one. So, yeah. And other news, um, Ole Miss drops out of the top ten to number 11 after their loss, so that's unfortunate. But uh, ASU had the biggest jump of all the teams in the rankings. They jumped five oh, spots. To? Ole Miss? Yeah, yeah, you guys think? to Auburn. Remember, we were okay. talking about the game where the guy's ankle snapped off? I don't care. I want you to say it again. Who they lose okay, to? Okay, well, they lost to Auburn where Treadwell's right, ankle they snapped. lost to Auburn. Yes, they did. Yes, they did. Um, but then you have ASU, Arizona State, um, had the biggest jump of the weekend. Uh, they jumped five spots from number 14 to number nine after the win against Utah. Again, that was a spectacular game. Killed my dark horse in Utah. But hey, you know they, you, you never know if they win out. They, I think they still have to play Oregon. They could, they could win out. So, and be up top. So, yep. So that is our NCAA talk. Who do you think is going to end up in the playoffs? Let us know. Comments down below. Give us your top four teams. Um, Comments down below. Be Notre Dame. Dame. That's right. Notre Dame is still out there. And actually, when I posted this video, I got a couple Notre Dames out there. So I told you. I told you. If Notre Dame's your team. Notre Dame's your team. So, well, but hit us up. Comments down below. Of course. I'll do it. At Words My Face on Twitter. Words My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. Words My Um, But yeah, so let's move on to the next set of stories for the evening, and let's talk a little bit of NBA. Yeah, what? b-ball started. Nobody said b-ball since the '90s. I'm bringing it back. It's right. Bringing back b-ball. Okay, I'm not b-ball. Bringing back. Did you do that on purpose? Other things start with b. No, I didn't. <laughs> but hey. But uh, yeah, so so um, yeah, let's start with uh, J.R. Smith. Uh, now he's in uh, the headlines again, and not because he's played well recently. It seems like he likes to be in the headlines a lot, so he's not playing so well, and he's going to figure out a way in. Um, but J.R. Smith just got suspended for one game for hitting Glenn Rice Jr. 
in the groin area in their game against the Wizards, where the Wizards really just whooped up on them. Um, yeah, that's, that's pretty clear. Bad, 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 bad idea. Bad, bad form. Bad form. Yeah. As as Hook would say, bad form. Bad form. Dustin Hoffman. Not, not only that, like even if this was boxing, that would be bad form. <laughs> Usually, yeah, you know, like, no, like no the first thing the they should say: <laughs> no hitting below the belt. Yeah. Even in some Don't do it. Where they Don't do it. Not things. That's like the only thing they disallow. It's like maybe no biting, no hitting below the belt. Yeah. Yeah. And it's Glenn Rice Jr. I'm sure he wants a Glenn Rice the third. So why are you trying to why are you trying to do that to him, man? That ain't cool. Just ain't cool. Ain't cool. But uh, yeah. So he will be suspended for a game. So he will lose a game check. But I just wanted to go over a couple of the things. And this is just the past um, two years of things that he's gotten in trouble for. If you want to look back further, there's more there. But so, um, like, last year, he was suspended for five games for violating the substance abuse policy in the NBA. Um, then also that year, I believe he was fined $25,000 for a hostile tweet he tweeted towards Brandon hostile Jennings. Tweet. Yeah, hostile tweet. A hostile tweet. Yeah, that was the first well, time I, I heard that. That's kind of silly. His, uh, his actions of late, a hostile tweet might need to be taken seriously. Well, yeah, well, you never know. Um, but you say, oh, I do the groin. <laughs> in the 2012-2013 season, we talked about this. This was a very fun story we had. Um, was I like to call it shoelace gate, and that is where he was untying players' shoelaces at the free throw line. Um, he got $550,000 for that. In 2012, he got fined another $25,000 for posting an inappropriate photo of him and a woman on Twitter. So mm. maybe this guy shouldn't be on Twitter? It's costing him I'm a lot I'm thinking that. I'm thinking that might be better for his career. You know, yeah. Or the more sensible thing, which I think is probably what a lot of pros do, he should have an official PR guy handle his Twitter so he yeah. has the presence for the fans, but with someone competent who's not going to ruin his reputation. <laughs> yeah, like himself. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, and in 2012 playoffs, he was actually suspended uh, for game four of that playoffs because he elbowed Jason Terry in the head. Uh, so, yeah, he's he likes to get himself thrown out. And, and the question is, is he worth it? And I can't say yes. I just I can't do it. Because, yeah, <laughs> earlier in his career, he was a really good talent, and he did have a good couple months in New York, it seemed like. But this guy just seems to be a bigger liability than an asset, and so that usually means you should cut ties. And and New York is not going to be putting up with that because they do have the Zen Master and Phil Jackson running the show up there. He's the, the president of basketball operations. So look for either a sit-down with them, and if it doesn't work, uh, they're just probably just going to let go of them. Now, when Isaiah Thomas was there, hey, anything goes. Do whatever you want. He ain't there anymore. Phil Jackson, I, he's not looked at like a disciplinarian, but he is a smart guy. He does realize risk and reward. Yeah, mm -hmm. high risk, high reward, but if you're high risk and no reward, hmm. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, it's looking like he will not be much of a New Yorker for very much longer. Uh, so, I don't know. Let us know what you think. Is J.R. Smith worth it? Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at Words My Face on Twitter. Words My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. Now, let's keep it with the NBA, though, and let's talk about LeBron James. Now, LeBron James's team started out 1-2. and two. The Cavaliers, they're not experiment because it's been done millions of times, but their whole bringing together another big three with the Kevin Love, bringing in Ky uh, Kyrie Irving was already there, and LeBron James... You know, people were thinking, hey, this team's going to be amazing. This team's going to be just as good as the Heat was. Not really. I don't really think they will. But um, everybody was really shocked when they started out 1-2. and two. And not only did they start out 1-2, and two, but they just didn't look very good in those two losses. So after Honestly, though, that I'm not start, phased by that. It's, it's the first three games in basketball. Yeah. There's so many more games to come. They, they need to just get warmed up. And, yeah. and if most people don't look back, and if you look at the first, I want to say first ten games that the big three were together in Miami, I think there were five and five, and then they went on just to go to the finals that year. Or No, they got bounced yeah. out before they got to the yeah. finals. I mean, um, honestly, these still, guys are just getting, yeah, they're just putting together a new team with the big players 
all playing together for the first time. Like I'm, I don't expect a whole lot from the first three games, or even the first yeah. five games. And see, now that doesn't surprise me. Them starting off that way, I really they'll they'll write the yeah. ship. But what does surprise me, what why I'm making this into a story, is because some of uh, LeBron James's comments. It almost seems like he's almost given up on the year already, which is surprising. He didn't do that. He's been in the game long enough that he he should know better than that. Yeah, he should know better. But his comments, he as quote, he said, "Uh, "We have to understand what it takes to win." You know, and then he said some other things. But I kind of cut down his his. uh, I don't like to. I handwrite out all my notes, so I didn't want to write it. But so we have to understand what it takes to win. It's going to be a long process. So almost like uh, he's, and he's also saying that there was no winning in Cleveland for years and years. Yeah, he's, but he was kind of letting everybody know, hey, don't expect it this year. That's the tone of voice he had. Mm. Like, don't expect us to do anything this year. It's going to be a little bit. He threw in a couple year things in there, and he, it just doesn't seem like he's really energized like he was when he got to Miami. Now, does that mean he won't get energized? No. Does that mean it's the beginning of the season and LeBron James is built for the playoffs? Yes. So um, I don't read too, too much into it, but he does seem a little more discouraged than he did at the same time in Miami when they were going through the similar growing pains. Uh, Now, Kevin Love hasn't been really the player that they thought he would be yet. But again, we're only three games in, and Kyrie Irving, everybody's like, well, he's got to get used to being more of a point guard, point guard, a pure point guard instead of a scoring point guard. But again, he will. Once he realizes, oh, hey, there's LeBron. Let me just give him the ball. You know, that'll happen. It'll all come. So people need to stop freaking out and just let the season unfold. Mm-hmm. You know? Now, there are people, though. Well, uh, hit us up. Let us know what you think. Uh, the, Clav- Cl- uh, the Clavland. I was going to say Clavland. I stopped myself, and then I said it anyway. <laughs> but are the Cleveland Cavaliers going to be good this year? Are they going to be bad? Is it going to work out? Is it not? My opinion is, yeah, it's going to work just fine. But hit us up. Comments down below, of course, at What's My Face on Twitter, What's My Face at gmail.com, Google Plus and Facebook. Um, but talking about them, let's talk to two about two fan bases that should be really, really happy. And that is there's only two undefeated teams left. Now, yeah, it doesn't really take long for uh, people to drop a game here well, and there. But well, the two we undefeated have, teams left in what? In basketball. You didn't say what we were... Well, we were talking about basketball. I just assumed we were going to continue talking about basketball. You were changing topics. How am I supposed to know? Okay, let, all right. I'm Reset confused, the Brian. I'm confused. So here's two fan bases that should be really happy in the NBA because they only, they're only they the only <laughs> two undefeated franchises left out there, um, and that is the Houston Rockets and the Memphis Grizzlies. Both of these teams, one is 5-0, and Houston Rockets, one is 4-0, and the Memphis Grizzlies. Both these teams have looked really good. Now, they haven't quite played the caliber of competition um, that you'll find. The Spurs are 2-1 and one or something like that. Spurs don't play basketball until April, you know, so a lot of these teams just don't care until later on in the season, so we'll, we'll, we'll see where it goes, Neither do but, I. but the Houston Rockets have looked really good, their addition of Trezor, Trevor Ariza seems to really be working out, Dwight Howard seems to be reinvigorated, and James Harden is just scoring like crazy, whereas in Memphis you have more of a kind of a balanced uh, effort there, so that kind of made me beg the question, who are they going to be the best teams in the East and West? Now, I'm going to say the San Antonio Spurs are going to be one of the top two, and then the Houston Rockets are going to be one of the top two. So those are my guesses. Memphis will make the playoffs, but I have a feeling they're going to fall back to a four, five, six range of a playoff seed rather than top because you still have, again, one and two will be Houston and uh, San Antonio, and then the Clippers are really good out there. Doc Rivers is going to get that team playing well. Golden State's really good this year. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll, we'll see a bunch of, of mixtures there. But then in the East... It's a lot more wide open. It's like, okay, so they're the East, but I'm going to say this anyway. It's like the wild, wild West. But, uh, uh, um, go ahead. Okay. Yeah. yeah, okay, okay. But <laughs> I had to put it out there. I had to, it is, because it's wide open. Again, I think the Cavaliers will be just fine, but who knows how good they'll really be, what their seeding will be. Uh, the, the Bulls have a great team. Um, with or without Derrick Rose, but it, they're not half as you know, they're they're about half as good without Derrick Rose as they are with Derrick Rose. And who knows? He's still getting injured. His ankle's been bothering him this year. Uh, but the Wizards look very consistent and very on point. Even without Bradley Beal, they played very very well. Looks like the addition of Paul Pierce was excellent addition of Paul Pierce. And plus, he'll be gone in two years. 
And guess who will be in D.C. in two years? Guess. Just guess. That means Kevin Durant. We're going to have to change the sound effect in two years when he's no longer playing for the Thunder. Uh, yeah, I'm not sure if we're going to be able to find a very good wizard sound effect. I, I'll, I'll look, though. I guess I got two I years. I look at <laughs> <laughs> you know, But, yeah, so... Um, but so my my guess for the top two teams in the East is going to be the Wizards as one of them, um, and I want to say the Bulls as the other because I do think Kevin, uh, sorry, Derek Rose will play at a good clip for most of the year, even with some injuries here and there. They've proven that they can play without him, but they play way better with him. But let's say let me give you a little contingency, and this is going to kind of come out of left field. I think the Raptors um, will be top three, top four team possibly jumping up to number two or, or one for that matter. I doubt number one, but could. Uh, because they had a great team last year. They were number three in the playoffs, uh, going into playoff seating. And they didn't lose anybody. They just kept their whole team, and that's a good thing for them because they were getting better last year. And so this gives them a little bit more time to yeah. gel as a team. And I could see that happening with some of the other big teams from uh, last year getting so mixed around. Like, obviously, the Heat entirely for the most part, entirely broke up with LeBron James leaving and everything like And all that dynamic going. Um, and it's not like the Cavaliers are yet looking like they're going to really take that spot over with their yeah, setup. They're still and they're, they still have the growing pains to go through. So yeah. Whereas I think they will be really good towards the end of the year, um, the beginning of the year will be a little bit rocky for them. So those, those yeah, are so that that opens things up for the Raptors to stay up on top, to stay up higher anyway. So... But I don't know. Let, it, let us know what you think. Who are going to be the top two seeds in each conference? Hit us up. Comments down below. Of course, at What's My Face on Twitter. Where's My Face at gmail.com. Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. But let's move it on to another sport. Probably the best sport that has ever been invented in the world, in the history of the universe. Yes, I know there's probably alien life out there that have a pretty cool sport. But then they'll come and invade Earth and be like, we'll destroy your whole civilization except for this one sport. And that is. The NFL. Okay, that's not a sport. It's football. <laughs> but I wanted to give... It is the midseason. Uh, almost all teams have played at least eight games, so had their bye weeks in there before we go to week 10. So I just want to kind of give my power rankings halfway through the season. Uh, number five... I believe Colts are the number five best team in the league. Their defense is playing a lot better than it did last year. Uh, and I just believe in Andrew Luck. That guys he's shown nothing but that he knows how to win. So how can you bet against him? Uh, number four, the Lions. Um, they're probably the second best team in the NFC just because, number one, they haven't had their best player on offense, Calvin Johnson, for the past like four or five games, and yet they still keep winning. It pisses me off because Calvin Johnson's on my fantasy team. I did draft him number one in, in one of the leagues, so he's coming back this week. Does it so feel weird cool. talking about the Lions like that? Like, Yes, it does. They, they <laughs> once lost like 18, 19 games in a row. <laughs> they yeah, were the first yeah, team ever to have a non-win season. So, And that wasn't too long that. ago. That was like 10 years ago. So, yeah, it I is remember that weird. too because you remember the, the team that broke that losing streak. They broke the losing streak against... Yeah, it was the Redskins. Yeah. 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 Yeah, we do that a lot. If you're winning, <laughs> if you're losing horribly and you want to get a win, play the Redskins. Because we're nice guys. Well, we feel bad for you. Yeah, we, right, we spread the love, spread the love. Uh, but number three, I have the Broncos. Uh, Peyton Manning still Peyton Manning. They only did better on the defense. Now, the defensive additions, especially TJ Ward and Aqib Tlaib, haven't quite worked out the way I thought they would. I thought they would have elevated that defense to more of an elite level than it has, especially that secondary. But it does take time to gel. Uh, now, the addition of DeMarcus Ware was a great addition. Von Miller's being able to run that, rush that passer better than he ever has. So that's been good. Now, number two, it would have been flip-flopped had one of the other teams won this past weekend. But number two is New England. Tom Brady is playing like he, he found the fountain of youth and he's playing like he's 29 again, so can't hate on him. I'm and still a little surprised that you, you didn't put Broncos at number two, to be honest. But I would have put them at number two, but they just lost to New England last weekend, so they can't be number two anymore. Not allowed. <laughs> they, they could have still, but we'll see. We'll no, see. not allowed. Not allowed. But, uh, yeah, so number one is going to be the Cardinals. They have the best record in football. And I don't know if they're really better than any of these teams. Hell, I don't even know if they're the best team in their division because you still have the 49ers and the uh, Seahawks there. 
but those two teams aren't playing that great. They're seven and one in the best division in football. So you are what you, you what your record says you are, and their record says they're the best team in football. So I can't hate on them. They're playing great on all faucets of the game, <clears throat> offense, defense, and special teams, clicking on all all cylinders. Andre Ellington's having a great season. Um, they're having a great year, even though Larry Fitzgerald isn't quite having the same production that he had uh, in years past. So, yeah, I, I just can't hate on them. They're just playing amazing. So, Yeah, yeah, 7-1 record yeah, at this point. Number one is to scoff at in general, but exactly, given the teams that they're playing uh, with the Seahawks and, and the, the 49ers, I mean, I we were saying earlier in the season we thought the 49ers were really going to take the, take the Super Bowl, but... No, I didn't they're, say that. They're doing okay. I didn't, yeah, I didn't say yes, that. Yes, you did. I said, the Seahawks would, I said the Seahawks would repeat, but look, watch the tape. It's out there. No, no. I, oh, well, well, whatever. We'll go back through the tape. I know that you said it was the 49ers were going to nope. take it. Nope. Look at the tape. I said the Seahawks. I said I want the 49ers rather than the Seahawks, but I believe it was the Seahawks. Nope. <laughs> okay, <laughs> but let us know who your top five teams in the NFL are. Hit us up, comments down below, of course, at what's my face on Twitter, what's my face on gmail.com, Google Plus and Facebook. Always good ways of getting a hold of us. Um, and then let's talk about our last NFL story of the night. And this was just a really funny story. Um, so apparently on Wednesday's practice for the Jets, now the Jets are not doing well. I believe they're about 1-7, maybe 1-8 and eight now. And they benched their starting quarterback, Geno Smith, for Michael Vick, who hasn't played too well. Their defense is playing horrible. Their special teams, they're just falling apart at the seams. So uh, at practice, apparently somebody hired one of those banner planes. You know what I'm talking about? If you've ever been to the beach, you've seen a hundred of them. Um, to fly around their practice facility for about 20 minutes with a banner that said, Fire John Idzik. Now, John Idzik <laughs> is their general manager. So for about 20 oh, wait, minutes... Wait, wait. A, a plane flew around saying, fire John Idzik. They hired it, or some someone just randomly? Yeah, I'm sure it was a fan. They know who hired it? No, I don't think they do. Um, but I just thought that was hilarious. I've never heard of that. Now, I've heard of fans putting up billboards about stuff like that, but I've never heard of one of them hiring a plane to circle the practice facility for 20 minutes. Uh, that, that that's going to go down in history. Man, I would hate to be, to be him. Like, think about, about that. If someone had a... A plane flying over saying to fire you yeah. from your job. Like, Damn it, people put thousands of dollars into wanting me to get fired. What the hell? Um, now, I would say that that might have happened in D.C. one of these times, but it would be illegal for them to fly that close to capital, so that will never happen here. But, you know. Yeah. Okay. But well, yeah, so I, just, I just wanted to mention that. I thought that was an, a hilarious story. Again, you have to be a really disgruntled fan base to do that. I believe Oakland's 0-8, and, and they still haven't done anything like that. Uh, Buccaneers are 1-8 one and, one and or 1-7, and, and they have never done anything like that. So, yeah, you have some passionate fans, but yet some very, very disgruntled fans. One yeah. might say they're almost as disgruntled as the disgruntled bookies. But let us know what you think about John Zidzik getting fired. But as I talk about the disgruntled rookies, it is time for us to transition into the words from my face fantasy football league extravaganza of 2014. My team, the disgruntled And as we do every week, let's go over some of the scores from last week. And let me just bring it up on my phone. It decided to die in the middle of it, so I had to bend down and charge it. It's not there. And Brendan doesn't have the app on his phone. Just, I mean, go ahead and put in the comments. I have the whole thing up right now. Why not have the app on your phone? Like, is is there any reason anybody out there can think of not to have the fantasy football, ESPN fantasy football app on your phone? Brendan refuses to do it. it. (laughs) He refuses to do it. I do not understand. And sometimes he's like, I wasn't able to set my lineup, man. It just didn't work. Why? How does it not work? It takes two seconds on your phone. Just app, do, 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 do. And I know you still go on the website on your phone. Why not just take the shortcut, the app, the wormhole per se, straight to the information? Gus, I don't trust them. I don't trust the <laughs> The app is going to get you. Nor the government, nor the disgruntled Wookiees. Yeah, those disgruntled Wookiees. You shouldn't trust the disgruntled Wookiees. They'd be hacking into my accounts. They do that sometimes. With their, their Wookiee chainsaws. And that, like, literally, they're hacking it. Like, with, I know the chainsaw can just saw through, but they're hacking with the saws. It's like a hack has special, chainsaw. Like, fiber optics <laughs> in the chainsaw. Fiber optic chainsaw. <laughs> okay, well, my phone's not working right now. So, Brendan, uh, actually, now, now it decided to work. 
So I can I'm tell gonna, you the scores. Well, I got it now. All right, it didn't work for two seconds, and we stalled. All right, that's why we stall sometimes. <laughs> you know what? Sometimes the chainsaw stalls, and then you have a glimmer of hope. But then it starts, and then, and then he rips it off your arms, and then it doesn't work. So, but let's start this week um, with Redskin Potatoes playing Team Hugel. Now, Team Hugel is the best team in the league right now at eight and one. It's looking like they're going to win our very first prize. He's going to win our very first prize. But he squeaked out a win, eighty six, eighty three over the Redskin Potatoes. Um, especially with Nick Foles, his quarterback, getting hurt in the middle of the game. Uh, now, he did have a solid performance from Denard, uh, D. Hopkins. I don't know if it's Denard, whatever. Uh, and it looks like most of his team just scored solid points. Um, now, Redskin Potatoes did have Deshaun Jackson give him 18 and Anquan Bolden 15, but everybody else kind of let him down. So uh, we have Team Hugel winning that one. Then we have Team Tabner versus Team Crawford. And I'm going to call that the uh, pathetic bowl because not that both of their teams are bad, but it was a 46 to 47 game, so yeah. that is horrible. It was very uh, close for yeah. the like lowest scores ever. <laughs> yeah. Now Team Tavner, I feel bad because I had Philip Rivers playing in one of my leagues, so I feel your pain. Philip Rivers had minus three points for him, so it's never good when your quarterback does that to you. Uh, Team Crawford didn't have anybody do it. He actually had two two uh, uh, spots that had zero points. But he also didn't have any negative points, so Team Crawford squeaked that one out by one point. Um, and then we have uh, Cowboys and Indians pl- had playing Amingo Ate My Baby, and that was Amingo Ate My Baby got a win. He's actually picking up steam right now. He yeah, won 118-104 of the Cowboys and Indians now, which is really surprising too, because Cowboys and Indians like a, had a four, a four or five game winning yeah, streak. He's, like, he's, he's really, he's really, he's really turning it on at this point yeah. in the season. Uh, now, um, Cowboys and Indians did have 35 points out of Ben Roethlisberger. Ben Roethlisberger has continued his record-setting trend over the past two weeks. Um, but other than that, I mean, he had 19 points out of the kicker. But Amingo Ate My Baby just had solid play from everybody. Um, Andre Ellington, 18. Rob Gronkowski, 16. 27 from Jeremy Macklin. 23 from Mark Ingram. So enough players did enough to, to win that game. Um, then we have, oh, WMFF. WFMF. I should know our own moniker. I should know that. You really should. <laughs> I should. WFMF Chainsaws. That would yeah. be pretty good. Uh, beat Team T 77, uh, 106 to 77. Uh, yeah, Marshawn Lynch had a great game for you. Not many yards, but two touchdowns there. You had uh, Muhammad Sanu. I still think that was a brilliant pickup earlier this year. Got you 15 points. Aaron Foster continued his great trend with 17 points. Um, and your kicker got you 15 points. Then you were playing Tom Brady with 27. Uh, that was about it. Eric Decker had 12, and that was about all he had. And that mm-hmm. brings us to me, and I know I was put me in last, and I got crushed this week. And I'm probably, I think I'm on a three-game losing streak right now. Um, I lost 98-61 because nobody wanted to do anything. Ben Tate had two points. What the hell, Ben Tate? Uh Keenan Allen for my defense, San Diego, gave up 37 points, gave me minus six points. Um, and, you know, Team Baker has a solid solid squad. Peyton Manning had 21, Alfred Morris 22, Antonio Brown 20. So what am I supposed to do except for not suck? It is my league. I could not suck in my own league. Mm-hmm. You could. Next year, as yeah. commissioner, I will give myself the top ten picks. And hopefully win. But follow my tips. They were great tips. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah there, there's a little video. Look it up, you know. Yeah, it was a great tip. You know? But uh, you can always check out what's going on in the league. Uh, ESPN.com, World's My Face League. You can always check out who's scoring what and how we're doing and how I'm just sad that I'm doing bad. Yeah, I'm not very confident about this week either. It's going to be a tight one. So it looks like whoever's going to win the award at the end of the season is not going to be us. So we did that on purpose, just so you know. And all disclosure, we didn't want to win. We were winning, and we're like, we better pull back. We can't give the award to ourselves. That just wouldn't be right. So yeah, we started trading away like good players and just picking up horrible. The, I, I went out and got the San Diego defense because I knew they were going to give me minus six points this week. So. I picked up. Um, actually, I was I was looking at it today. I had the ability to pick up Clinton Portis. <laughs> so, <laughs> I was surprised that, that he was still on the list. It, it says that he has a bye week every week. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but uh, yeah, that's gonna be able to do it. Bring the show to a close. Um, as always, I'm Brian. With me, as always, producer extraordinaire Brendan. You. And we are going to headbang our way out of this joint.
Yes, we are. Or Can't are we? Eyes open this much for longer. You gotta start the music. Keep so it open. Keep it open. Keep it open. Oh, I blink. Do it. I blink. Good night, everybody!